For the past several years, I've been fascinated by the Lamborghini Bosozoku ever since I saw Luke Hoxham's internet classic, Underground Hero. It was a video which profiled Motohoshi-san, the leader of a group called the World's Mightiest Motohoshi Family, which appeared to be an impossibly cool gang of neon-lit street racing Lamborghinis. I wanted to know who these guys really were and what they were like, but despite my growing profile in the media world, due to their infamy, it was difficult to gain an audience with the Motohoshi family. However, thanks to my collaboration with a group called World X Series Rally, Ken and I finally had the chance to meet them and run together through the C1 Loop and the Wangan Expressway. On this episode of The Hunters, join us as we dive into the world of the Lamborghini Bosco for one night. This is a chronicle of my personal experience exploring the underground car scenes of Japan. Follow my journey and discover the rich culture and history of street racing, drifting, and everything in between here in the land of the rising sun. This is The Hunters. この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしました。Alright guys, so we are heading to Motohoshi-san's、uh, garage. It's called Fighting Star, and、uh, it's gonna be cool to actually see his garage for the first time、uh, like、in real life, and to see hopefully the whole crew out there. You know, Lamborghini Bosozoku Club. Police officers like making them move babies. Yeah, it's、uh, writing down. License plates of all these suspicious individuals. This is Fighting Star. They have a Lamborghini Urus. Urus. All right. I guess we are just gonna start rolling because the tour starts at seven, and we literally just got here exactly at seven. The perfect timing, man. Oh, we're making a circle. We're turning around. Uh, that's Ivan, so I'm just gonna follow him for now. Okay. My friend Ivan over there. Perfect timing, actually. Yeah. World X Series Rally is our friend Ivan over there with the、uh, CEO of、uh, World X Series Rally,、uh, Conrad. As we entered the inner city network of highways, we came upon the elusive club of hyper flashy Lamborghinis lined up along the side of the road like a pack of wolves, waiting to tear into night on a hunt. Hey, it's Steve's POV.、Uh, Steve, nice to meet you. I'm Albo. Nice to meet you. In the flesh, this club has a mysterious aura that's hard to describe. It's somewhat intimidating because their existence initially doesn't make any sense. One usually doesn't modify a $500,000 car in extremely gaudy and flashy lights unless they really don't give a damn what anyone thinks. The fact that for some people in the rule-abiding culture of Japan can be quite scary. While I was more excited than terrified, my camera may have gotten a bit spooked because, unfortunately, it was from this point that I started having some issues with my mic. So excuse the audio and join us as we continue onward to Tatsumi Parking Area Number Two, one of the legendary spots along the highway network where street racers gather. The Lamborghini Bosozoku, which is an unofficial moniker that was bestowed upon them by the media, are a bit of a paradox. Bosozoku commonly refers to young hooligans who continuously rev their motorcycles while careening down the streets at breakneck speeds. While typical Bosozoku youth usually come from blue-collar working-class backgrounds near areas like Kawasaki and Chiba, the Lamborghini Bosozoku are a mysterious bunch of individuals who have managed to carve out a substantial living so that they can enjoy some of the finer things in life. As a result of their high status and net worth, several owners present prefer not to show their faces on camera. Yet, despite of, or perhaps because of, their widely different backgrounds, like other subcultures of car enthusiasts in Japan, the people here have come together due to a common interest and similar way of thinking, regardless of the particulars of their private lives. And like other Japanese social groups, it's common to not know anything about each other outside of the context of the gathering. The unspoken rule is something of a "don't ask, don't tell" policy, which can extend to jobs, backgrounds, even names, where people only refer to each other via their online handles.
being an investigative journalist, and for that matter, a gaijin or outsider, I often find that I have the unique opportunity to dive a little bit deeper because the usual rules of social interaction are slightly relaxed towards foreigners. Off camera, I had the chance to speak to some of the owners, and while I initially suspected some people had deeper connections to Tokyo's neon lit underground, the owners I spoke with were mostly just really successful businessmen and entrepreneurs who simply relish the flashy, sometimes gaudy image of the Lamborghini brand. In fact, while some of them may have indeed been bozozoku in their earlier years, several of the owners had an extremely low-key, even salaryman type appearance. This highlights three of the more interesting aspects about Japanese car subcultures that I've observed. The first is that if you have the means, you can modify your car however you like and do whatever you want and people won't really judge you for it. In the West, people may say that someone has more money than taste. However, here, people respect each other's styles and the implicit subtext is that taste is subjective to wealth. People who have become very rich have earned the right to be as gaudy as they want. Driving a heavily modified Lamborghini coated in mirror finish is like a rapper rocking a diamond studded Rolex. It's the ultimate flex because in Japan's hyper conservative society, wanting to stand out this much must mean you're a somebody and not a mindless corporate drone. We got, we got cops following us through, okay? So just keep the speed down. Okay. Okay, Mr. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Okay, okay. The more interesting juxtaposition comes when the owner steps outside of the car and looks more like a mild mannered accountant than a rapper. Their car is an expression of their id, their wildest self, externalized, realized, and personified into a monster machine. So going back to my main point, in some sense, if you have the means, you can simply buy your way into the culture and live your car life on your own terms. A lot of these guys roll with Morohoshi-san because they're customers of his brand and shop, Fighting Star. You don't necessarily have to have belonged to the Bosozoku subculture for years in your youth to participate. My second observation after night is that Supercar Bosozoku isn't so much its own tribe, but it's a style that has popped up in recent years as a sort of trend, kind of like how Underglow became popular. But by itself, it doesn't have its own long history deeply rooted in hardcore street cultures with underground connections. It's merely influenced by them. Buying a body kit doesn't automatically make you a hoon. Finally, my third observation is that despite what is said, it's interesting how people's behavior changes when the social dynamics change due to the context of the group. Rolling by themselves, the owners of these cars are usually quite soft-spoken and reserved, not always the flashy, posted type you might expect. They keep the underglow and lights off and set the exhaust to a more civilized setting, but when they roll together, oh boy is it a show, with the blaring lights and screaming exhausts reverberating through the concrete jungle. The Japanese public have come to accept the nuisance of youth motorcycle Bosozoku gangs as the sort of background noise of Japanese society. Similarly, they allow the Lamborghini Bosozoku to do their own thing as well. Roaring through the expressway, not really racing, but just making a lot of noise, just like the motorcycle gangs of their namesake. In the end, it occurs to me that what these owners are really looking for is exactly the same as all of us other car enthusiasts. Our cars, flashy for some, fast for others, for the Lamborghini Bosozoku both, it's all just a means to temporarily escape the grind of daily life. Once a fortnight for a few hours, these bulls run together wild and free. Man, what a rush. That was crazy. My ears are dead. Yeah, definitely one of my funnest like filming sessions ever. Wow, that's everything I thought it would be and more. Uh, I think it's fantastic, one of the best places in the world, you know, what, Wednesday night, 
look at this huge collection of Lambos, you know. And I've got to say, love being here. My third World X on the way, and uh, we hope to be here for many years to come. Awesome, thank you. Cheers, Alba. おしゃれ。おすすめの飲み物。あ、おすすめは日本のね、オロナミンシー。オロナミンシーはね、オロナミンがね、いっぱい入ってる。オンリージャパニーズ。すごい人気。おお、みんな。いや、フェイマス。
Uh, because sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You don't have a gimbal. You got a G7X Mark II. You gotta lean half your body out like that. So I'm, I'm like, if I, if I lean step over too much, I'm gone. I'm, uh, I'm an elbow crayon. of a dream for like the past eight years so it, it's really incredible how you can come to Japan and with a little bit of effort try to meet some people and you can find yourself in the crazy scenes like this I mean just eight years ago I was watching the Cox Sam's uh, underground hero video and now here we are so wow Hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, this this video, dude. What do you, what do you think? That was, that was pretty awesome. Like, yeah, that was insane. Yeah, like the lights, the sounds, like everything was exploding. The combination of everything—it's just so aesthetic. I I feel like I was in an anime, like in the middle of like Wanga Midnight anime, or something. More like a Hollywood movie. I yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. In, in the eventual Hollywood movie of our lives, that is definitely a pivotal scene because that was oh my god, it was completely insane. Yep. So. All right, I, I need to go home and process that, and I think you guys need to rewatch the video, like it, and uh, comment, and just like share it everywhere, because the world needs to see more of this amazing culture. So I'm gonna head home. Uh, you're gonna head to your dinner, and uh, we will catch you guys in the next video. So guys, thanks so much for supporting the channel. I have you know buying merch and supporting Patreon and all that. And uh, yeah, nothing else to say. I'm gonna end this here. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.